In this session we're going to talk about the general architecture of Visichrome. Visichrome is a task scheduler and automation tool for Windows. It consists of three different applications. You have the server part that is running as a Windows service in the background. You have the client part that is a WinForms application and you have the SysTray application, the Visichrome tray client. The tray client is used for notifying when a job has been started or completed. The normal client is used for configuring the server part and manually execute jobs. To start the Visicron client, you double click on the desktop icon or double click on the SysTray icon here. Once it has started, you are presented with this interface. This interface consists of uh, some main parts. You have the grid of jobs and tasks here. Jobs are placeholders for tasks. One job can contain one or more tasks. To connect to Visicron, you need to define a server connection. And the connection is being done between the client part and the server part. By default, we are connecting with a user called admin with a blank password. That is the default user. You can update this and change this later. To edit and manage existing connections, you click on the manage service buttons here. And I can edit, edit my existing connection here. I can set it to auto connect and startup. This means that when I start a client, it will automatically connect to the server part and list all the available jobs there. This setting is a local server uh, defines the way we are connecting to uh, Visicron. We have a local connection method which is much faster than a remote connection method. But with a remote connection method, you can connect across the internet to any Visicron server. All you need to do is to open the port here. You can change this port in the server settings. So if you're connecting locally, you should keep it at is a local server. If you connect remotely, you enter the remote host name here. It could be the IP or the DNS name. The username is entered here and the password is entered here. And if you need proxy settings, you can expand this and edit them here. You're also able to connect uh, through uh, Active Directory. And if you do that, it will connect with the current user that you're logged on as. To enable those kind of settings, you need to go to the server settings and ac accept that you will accept Active Directory connections from this server. The actual user permissions are controlled in a, on this window. You click on the user permissions and you will be presented with a list of users that are able to connect to Visicron. By default we have this admin user. If you want to update the username or password you can do this here. The permissions in Visicron are controlled in groups. So you can create one or more groups and one user can belong to one or more groups. And uh, at every phase when you're doing something, the actual permissions will be, will be evaluated for the current group of the user. We also have an API for programming against Visicron. This client that you see here is using the API. So everything that you can do within this client, you can also program yourself. So what you do is to create a, a .NET project in Visual Studio because the API is written in .NET. We will uh, provide more languages, languages after .NET, but right now we have the .NET language. And what you do is to uh, add the DLLs needed for uh, programming against this interface and then you will all the features will be easily exposed in Visual Studio. 
you can find more information by viewing the documents within the API folder of the installation. So this is it for a general architecture description and we'll continue with uh, our ne next session uh, which will be about uh, the main grid here and the general settings. Thank you.